Alrighty. Well, welcome everyone and welcome to Collaborating to Improve Students' Sense of Community and Purpose. Um, my name is Megan Baskell. I am a um, career education counselor, but I'm also the pathway lead for our business technology and entrepreneurship pathway. Um, and I am also a pathways coordinator uh, with, with Roy. I'll let you go ahead. All right. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Roy Ramon. Um, I am um, I'm the basic skills coordinator for our uh, district, uh, even though we know basic skills doesn't really exist, but I still exist. And I'm also uh, from the English department and currently the faculty um, uh, coordinator uh, for our guided pathways. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, a big part of hope our um, presentation today is to hopefully not just that we're talking to you, but that also we give you some time to participate, be engaged, discuss, with each other and so we've got that built into this today and, and while there's a lot here we hope we get you know most of that time or a good deal of that time gives you an opportunity to share and discuss this this question about uh collaborating and this is something that's happening uh, really it's been happening for our campus um over the last year or so as we've built uh guided pathways so to begin we want to uh get some feedback from you so we're going to have a poll just to kind of see take take the temperature of um of your own experience. And so uh, we'll do that right now. All right, does everyone see that? So first question, how connected do you feel to your counseling colleagues and vice versa? We'll, we'll say if you're, even if you're uh, on the counseling side, how do you feel about your relationship with your uh, instructional colleagues? Well, I'm glad that the not at all is zero for now. That's that's great news. Right, let me see how many do we have. I'll give it another minute or so for folks to, to contemplate this one. I think it's pretty stable. I think that we looks like uh, we have two thirds being extremely. Uh, and some of you, maybe you're not sure, that's okay. All right. Um, so to get back, um, oh, let me see, this out of the way for me. Um, so again, uh, uh, thinking about um, where MSJC is today, how we got here, um, a lot of that was driven by um, you know the beginning stages of how we were going to design uh, guided pathways for our campus. And so, you know, of course, a lot of that was grounded in equity, right? That's what we knew it was. Um, and so we've been on that journey for a while. We're still on that journey. We still have uh, quite a way, ways to go. But um, within that, you know, we, we, especially as we came into a pandemic um, and uh, just everything um, that was going on in the world at the time, um, you know, we had our call to action um, to work to dismantle uh, Racism by fostering authentic care and a sense of welcoming. We strive to create a place where students know they belong and that they have a community of counselors, teachers, classified professionals, administrators, ongoingly planning um, and supporting for the success. And so um, really uh, this also stems from um, a, a movement, uh, uh, a project in a sense that, that, we, that we dove into that came out of our student equity, which was our equity pledge. Um, and so that was really the beginning of it as a, as a campus, um, not just, you know, in one particular area, but as a, again, as a district. Next slide. So, you know, when we were beginning the process of developing what guided pathways, right, what our frame was going to be for our students, um, program maps was that, that big kind of uh, push uh, that we had to come up with. And we soon realized that, um, we were gonna to have to work together in ways that we had never worked before. And, and, and quite frankly, um, and this probably happens at a lot of our campuses, you know, we were in our silos. And in particular at our campus, um, you know, has some challenges. We are one district, but multi-campus, right? And so within that, our own, um, you know, uh, campuses, individual campuses, often to our two big campuses um, have their own departments. And so think about bringing just that together on the instructional side. Add on that, you know, our instructional faculty, 
you know, in a sense had their silos and great things happen in silos, right? I don't wanna talk completely bad about silos, but we really learned early on that we needed each other to go through this process. And, you know, we were really siloed, you know, there were some divisions. There was, there was a clear division at our campus. And a lot of that um, really just stemmed with having to rebuild relationships again. Not that we were angry at each other, but we just, you know, we just weren't close in a way that we needed to be as colleagues um, uh, at our, at our, in our district. And so this is really the result of the hard work of doing that. And it was really hard work to do that. Um, as you look at our organizational structure, um, this is kind of at the point that we are um, now, right? Um, the, our structure of our integration. And so um, when you look at instruction, and so just a couple of examples here of, of a couple of our pathways um, uh, that follow under instruction, people, culture, public service, and business technology, entrepreneurship, BTE, um, those again are supported by our instructional faculty and then our uh, pathways counselors. And so we have dedicated counselors that we have um, uh, brought together in a sense that we're being more focused on um, how we are centering, putting students at the center and supporting them through their particular pathway. We go on. And one thing I just wanna to add to what makes us mm -hmm. uh, somewhat unique is that everybody is now reporting to uh, instructional deans within the pathways. So the counselors and the instructional faculty are reporting now to the same instructional dean to kind of make it a more cohesive uh, collaboration. And that's a very recent uh, development. Uh, it's exciting. It's a little bit scary for some of us, but um, in the end, we're really excited about how we're moving forward with this collaboration. Um, and so as you look at how we, then these are our, um, our five pathways, right? Art, communication, design, uh, business technology, entrepreneurship, health and wellness, people, culture, public service, science, math, and engineering. Um, and then there's a discovery um, pathway that we have for those students that are maybe not too sure where they want to go, right? And so it's basically a three counselor assignment um, with a balance between campuses of full-time and part-time counseling. Um, and part of the process of how those particular counselors fell into those particular pathways was determined by background, education, interest. And so you know, it wasn't just a, a lottery of, of, of counselors that were put into these particular pathways. It was a little bit of work in making sure that we connected uh, with those counselors to make sure that they were going in the pathway that made sense to them. So I'll jump in here now. Um, so the concept of holistic student support, I'm sure many, if not all of you are familiar with this. This is coming from Achieving the Dream. This was kind of our launching point a couple of years ago as a counseling team. As I said in my introduction, I am a career education counselor, I'm a full-time counselor. So that is where, that was my perspective and where I'm coming from a lot of this. And this is where we kind of started. We went through uh, appreciative advisor, advising training and really began to look at how we had Start, well, we started with more of an inoculation method where we try to give a lot of information and hope that they, hope, hopefully a student will come back to really how can we provide more holistic services that are more integrated, that are more personalized. And that was scary for a lot. Career was a scary concept for a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of counselors and it's definitely for the instructional faculty, which we'll touch on as we move forward. Um, but that's where we found our spot was that the career development was a really a place where we found that we could provide really equity-based counseling. And that's where a lot of then our focus has been and really developing this and what does career mean? And because a big part of it was that a lot of people felt that career was finding the right job. And that's kind of the misperception out there is that we, we're trying to lock students in on a pathway, lock them in on a career and send them on their way. But it's not that career is a process. And so embracing that idea and really working through that has been really significant for us as we've been moving forward. So with, within counseling, we started focusing on training and development, information gathering, and building relationships then internally. Because part of this, in order to provide a community of support for our students, we had to then provide a community amongst ourselves first in order to give really genuine and authentic care and, uh, and create an authentic community. We had to be a community um, and we had to work on that and build it because of our, our silos. So over the last year, we've went through highly intensive training within counseling. 
um, starting just with either certification or recertification with our MBTI and strong interest inventory um, assessments. But then having someone come in and talk to us about career theory, revisiting that, how it applies, how it applies to special populations, looking at our implicit bias, looking at career and decision, looking at highly detailed local career information and gathering data for that, and equity when it comes to access, representation in our majors, and then also within the career field. And we have then plans for ongoing development going into the next year. And this has really been a, a, a collaboration between career education and pathways in delivering all of this as we've been going forward. One of the biggest things, again, was we had anxiety about this right career idea and providing these services or feeling like we needed to be the experts somehow and that, that students should be coming to us. So it was a real retooling and understanding that the student is the expert and we just need to help find what are the strengths, what are those values, what are those skills, what's the personality, how can we build on that moving forward? And it was revisiting John Crumboltz's theory of happenstance that was extremely empowering. And this is where uh, an issue that was really a kind of a, uh, an, an anxiety provoker became a issue that allowed us to make to, have, to move forward to take some action and this is really the idea that just exploration taking action um, and which we can help provide uh, that's that's what's needed since most jobs we don't even know of right now but that we just want to help students explore 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 and this also then becomes the grounds for because this can't even happen it can't happen just in a counseling relationship it needs to happen in the classroom too. So this becomes a great way then for us to collaborate as we're moving forward. So career really then became a spot of collaboration. So we're gonna launch one other little poll, our last poll here, uh, if we could. And I wanna ask you, how would you describe your experience of integrating career into your student's journey? And I'm really talking about from the perspective, how was it culturally at your institution? Was it easy? Was it challenging, fun, or was it painful? Did you have some resistance there? Perfect. So we're seeing challenging and fun. I'm glad to see painful is not represented. <laughs> we're also seeing that easy is not represented. Oh, yes, there's one. <laughs> But I'm seeing majority right now as being a, a challenge. And I think it's because, well, actually I know it's because we have this false dichotomy that it's like career versus liberal arts, that they're somehow mutually exclusive. Um, when actually they are completely, there's a complete overlap between the two because career is not a, a destination. Career for all of us will always be a process of self-discovery and a reflection of who we are as individuals. Even for all of us, five years from now, if we end up in the same Zoom, we won't be in the same place that we are right now in our career. We're going to be in a different spot. It's a journey. And so embracing that idea, playing with that idea, um, really becomes um, really fun as we move forward. So our first activity is, hold on one second, let me end this and clear this out of my... Okay. All righty. So our first activity what we'd like you to do is we want us to kind of play a little bit with the idea of career and collaboration and see this as an opportunity. Um, so hold on one second, my poll's still popping up. How do I, there we go. So if you can grab a piece of paper or a sticky note, whatever you have by you. And I'd like you to answer these questions here on your screen. Let's move this really quickly. So, and these are questions that as counselors or as instructional faculty are great to ask students. It's better than the old, what are you interested in question or what do you wanna be or anything like that. But what would you do if you won the lotto and never had to work again? It's just job, first thing that comes to your head. What do you read for fun? Or if I was to stumble across you in Barnes and Noble, what section would I find you in? What is your internet browsing history? If you're gonna look through it. And if you had to donate $1 million to a cause, what would that cause be? All right, so 
you mind repeating the question? Oh, there they are. Okay. <laughs> I just saw them. Okay. I'm so, so Oh no, this is something different. Okay. I was trying to write down the questions. I had to get a piece of paper. <laughs> oh, okay. We yeah, have there. You right mind here. repeating them real quick? I got two of them. I just didn't get the, the, okay, the first two. Sure. They're on the, and they're on the screen too, but if, for anybody who's joining us via a device, that's kind of hard. I will definitely read them again. One would be, what would you do if you won the lotto and never okay. had to work again? What do you read for fun or where would I find you at Barnes and Noble? Okay. What is your internet browsing history? If you were to go back and look at your history, what kind of theme might pop up again and again and again? Like cooking, <sighs> Home Depot. <laughs> if you had to donate $1 million to a cause, what would it be? Okay, got it. And I can see now too. Thank you very much. Of course, of course. <laughs> So hold on to those, and I would like to just share something with you. So this is an activity we engaged in. And this is kind of just gives you an idea of kind of, so we're basically now doing like a mashup. So um, skills at the top, interests on the side. Again, this is not related to the questions I asked you right now, but just hold on to those. We'll come back to those. So if we look at the skills, construction, event planning, technology, art, these might be skills that a student has interest that a student has. And if we take a, say, construction skill and an interest of animals, we can have some fun with what possible careers can come, uh, can result. Design appropriate habitats at the zoo for animals based on their natural settings. It's a perfect mashup. If we take art and music, you could make and paint custom guitars. And of course, this is the world of work we live in now. It's, we have, it's a gig economy oftentimes. Students are highly creative, doing a lot of independent contract, contract work available to them, being their own independent contractor, switching jobs every four years. Creativity is definitely needed as we move into the area of career. So what, I would, what we'd like you to do now is we're going to share this with you in the chat. So if you could grab this, we're gonna send you into breakout rooms. And when you're in your group, identify one person whose who's notes about the lottery and Barnes and Noble you're gonna use. And those are, answers are gonna go on the top. So if the lottery answer is travel, if Barnes and Noble is travel, or maybe it is um, self-improvement, uh, whatever those are, you're gonna put them across the top and then just decide some different programs at your school down the side. If it's business or culinary, history, psychology, you can determine that. And then I want you to kind of play around and have fun and mash up what kind of possible careers could come from those coming together. And then we'll come back in just a little bit. So we'll probably do like six to eight minutes of that. And so we'll send you out now, grab that from the chat and then go ahead. And if you could, uh, there, we have multiple times in the Google doc, if you're sent into breakout room two, fill in number two with your answers. I love it when we get to come back from breakout rooms. I get to see some faces. Yay. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> um, so hopefully that was something you kind of had fun with. Hopefully there was some, some laughing even too. Um, I'm curious, I, I, because of the numbers, if you wouldn't just maybe, uh, if you could please put in the chat some of the crazy mashups you found. Um, what did you put together and what was your result? We could kind of see some of those in the chat. And it could be funny. It could be just really interesting, something you want to do yourself. I'm sorry, could you repeat that again? I don't know why it keeps on changing my audio so I, it go, everything was mute. Okay, no problem. I'm just, I'm at, at, if everybody could put in the chat or a few people from the chat, go ahead and maybe put some of the mashups you found in your breakup session. So when you combined, let's say if it might be travel and business, what did you find? Or if maybe it was travel and a viticulture program, what kind of different combinations did you possibly come up with? So you got culinary and travel and what kind of a job did we, did you guys come up with culinary and travel? I could definitely see a cruise trip, a, a cruise operator going down. Oh no, okay. Just answers the questions, okay. 
Anybody else get a chance to come up with a cool job? I know we don't have a lot of time with this. Oh no. Sure, let's do one together. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it, so somebody tell me, which one did you, tell me what would you do if you could donate your money? Someone can throw it into the, into the chat. I would donate to the foster care system. The foster care system, okay, perfect. So then let's pick a program at MSJC. Roy, you wanna grab one? Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, sociology. Sociology, okay. So yes, or even auto technology, I like it, Betsy. Uh, so if we're gonna be doing either one of those, sociology, auto, and donating to foster youth, what, what, what could we possibly be doing with that? What, what kind of careers could somebody have? Social worker. Social worker. An accountant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We definitely could see somebody, if it was auto tech too, it could be somebody who is um, working for an organization and organizing maybe the um, intake of car do donations and any kind of maintenance and things that have to do with that, with the money or then going towards foster youth. Organization mm -hmm. where you could like train underprivileged people or at risk youth and, and get them into a industry where they could be, you know, they could get, gain, they could get gainful employment. Yes. So it could be then, yes, I love that. So they could use, working with that population and teaching them skills, automotive technology skills. So you're able to then mash it up in that way as well. The awesome. grant writer came up a couple of times. And I love Alex culinary and reading together. Um, delicious destinations blog. Yes. <laughs> Travel the world and do de delicious, delicious destinations. And I apologize. There isn't a lot of time, but the big thing is get a flavor of this because this is something that is a great way to break the mold of career. And this idea that career is a right thing that we have to find. And that pathways mm -hmm. is trying to lock students in because it is not about that. It's about us all engaging in career, all of us being creative and giving students opportunities then to really explore that along their path and as many opportunities as we, as we possibly can. And we really, of course, need to move beyond just classes are wonderful, workshops are wonderful, conversations with counselors are wonderful, but how more can we integrate that then throughout the experience so that we are constantly giving our students an opportunity to explore careers and creativity, creatively in all of our different programs of study. So I'm gonna go past all of this. So I'm gonna go by this really quickly. We info gathered with career, going back to the counseling liaisons. So we've definitely, we're doing lots of training with career. We've been gathering very specific info as we've been going along. And just to give you an example then, I'm, I'm lead of the business technology and entrepreneurship, BT. We are meeting routinely then every single month. We have very structured visitors coming in. We are making customized worksheets. We're really delving into our understanding of career to transfer, transfer opportunities with private and public so that we can better serve our students. So that's, a, a, we are just ongoing, just collecting, collecting, collecting. And all of this, this grounding in career and more of an expansive view of career as a process along with our info gathering leads us to our conversation today, which is then building those internal relationships so we can have authentic community inside our institution and then be more genuine with our community that we offer them, our students as well. And of course, this is grounded on going and timely contact, meeting attendance, sharing of information and coming up with creative bios. And actually really quick, I'm actually gonna go forward because I wanna just land on that creative bios really quickly and then go back. This is some, a lot of you have uh, had instructional faculty at your institutions equitize syllabi <clears throat> and including in the equitizing the syllabi is making sure that you, the faculty are more personable. So you see a, the real person behind the instructor introduced into the syllabus and oftentimes a more student friendly language with English 101 or whatever course they happen to teach. Well, this is an example of how we're trying to take this to another level now. And this has just started at our institution where counselors are reaching out, working with instructional faculty and saying, hey, send us your bios. 
That way I can get to know you better. I'll share it with you as well. And when I have a student and I'm planning a class and I know they're going into your class, I can say, you know what? You're going into so-and-so's class. They love, they have a dog. They love to bake. You're going to have love it. And let me tell you what you'll be doing in that class as well. The, the teacher specifically says, don't worry if you haven't written in an essay in a while or you absolutely dread them. We'll be working together. So right away, we're building community internally by understanding who we are as people. And then at the same time, then reinforcing that for the students. So when they walk into that classroom, they already feel like they belong because we've already established that on the back end as well. And my dream, maybe it will supplant meet my professor or rate my professor one day, uh, since that is not the best way of finding out about our, our, our faculty. We wanna match the students up in a better way. But that's just one example of how we're then trying to come up with more creative ways to create community internally. And that comes back to doing program maps and our, we have a career coach tool which provides the Holland codes. That's step number one of our enrollment process right now for any population coming in. We want them to go through the career coach instrument and find out, get introduced to the Holland codes and find out what kind of initial careers that they kind of might be um, looking to explore incorporating that into Canvas, incorporating that into the syllabus. Of course, extra assignments built in as well. Have a career chat, not just build an education plan with a student, but really talk about career with a counselor, a career chat. Um, and providing and structured career development opportunities, doing informational interviews or even a virtual video. And of course, counseling can definitely help with that and working them with instructional faculty to begin building that into courses. And then we love to visit too. <laughs> but this is one I, I often will say too with my, to the, my business uh, faculty members that they, you know, you have to go for a conference. If you're out for some reason, definitely come in. Where I have come in, given presentations on successful resumes within business, different kind of things, but inviting us in and having that back and forth. But the biggest thing is when including counseling say on Canvas, it's not just like, here is the link to counseling. It's looking for ways to connecting people to people. So connecting students to the people. So connecting us by name to, and it's really making sure our language is speaking of community internally and, that of, and of a team of support for students. And with that, I'm going to then, oops, sorry, my keeps going. There we go. I'll pass back to Roy. Okay. Um, you know, and, and getting a little bit back to um, you know, the career piece on, on the instructional side, that, that was that's actually during the you know, during the mapping process uh, uh, in our inquiry groups, um, as, again, as we were kind of designing what our pathways is gonna be, um, there were some, uh, instru some instructional faculty, I think struggled with the, the notion of the focus, that really strong focus on career. And the, the way we began to frame it was really focusing on skills. So like going back to that, that exercise that, that uh, Megan went through, that, that's part of it, like thinking about the skills. And that's really, that resonated pretty well with instructional fac faculty that were a little bit resistant to this really strong focus on career. Um, and so that's just something to consider uh, going forward. One of the other things um, that uh, I've, I've uh, um, adopted as a, as a community of practice, uh, especially when we have these large meetings, when we have to have brave conversations about things like equity, about um, right dismantling and disrupting our systems, is grounding it in scholarship and in reading. And so some of you probably already do this, but this is something that helped a little bit, at least to get the conversations going. And so we're gonna do a little bit of that today here. And so um, I put it in the chat in a PDF, hopefully you can open it. And I'm gonna give, we wanna give you some uh, silent time to read. And so we're gonna have you read at uh, Fostering Effective Connections Between Academic and Student Affairs at Historically Black Colleges and Universities um, from Career Pathways to Collaborative Partnerships. Um, and so as you go through this, you may wanna, it's, it's a fairly short reading, but it's dense in parts, right? So the literature review, for example, is pretty dense. So you may wanna kind of gloss through that quickly and maybe get to some key points um, in the discussion um, in this piece and just look for and identify that this is that my English uh, 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 faculty person kicking in, you know, look for your golden lines, right? And golden lines are things that stand out to you that you want to share in a breakout room. So we're going to have a, an, another set of breakouts where you get to share your golden lines and then um, also a set of questions um, that we'll have for you uh, during the breakout. So let's take about maybe uh, eight, seven, eight minutes 
Um, you, if you want, if you're on a screen and your camera, you want to shut that off while you do some silent reading. We'll take about eight minutes of silent reading, and then we're going to put you into breakout rooms for a couple of minutes. I, so I don't see share. the link in the chat on Zoom. Let me put that again. It should be an attachment. Let's see here. Do it one more time. There should be a file, file PDF link. I, I don't see anything either. Hmm. I, I, there's nothing. I don't even have any I have it. from you. Okay. Yeah. See a new message. And I see where you said it's on the chat. Oh, double click. Yeah. Double click on what? I know. Hmm. Not sure. Anyone else not seeing it? I'm not, I'm seeing, not it seeing it as well. Yes, I'm not seeing it. Anything. Not seeing it. Strange. Brian, Megan, I, huh? I see it. It's there, but maybe not oh, visible wonderful. for some folks. Hmm. I wonder. We tested it. <laughs> Why don't we go into breakout rooms and yeah. maybe hopefully enough people in there have it. Maybe it can be shared or something like that. And they, we can, so Abby, why don't we do breakout rooms right now? Let's try that. Yeah, we're, we're short on time. So here are questions uh, as you go into your breakout rooms. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be related to the reading. We can kind of just jump into also what you've learned today. Um, you know, what have you learned that you want to take forward? What do you want to change based on what you've learned or experienced? And then what support from the state region college do you think do you, that you'll need? And so um, if you're able in your group to have the reading, you can share that reading on screen and then maybe go through it if you want to as a group, that's fine. Um, so thanks time again for your have? patience. Uh, let's say about seven, eight minutes. Is that, is that enough time, Megan? I think good? so. Okay. We'll go in and all get right. the temperature too. We can check in thank with you, all thank of you. you. Yeah, thank you. All right, I'll open them now. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. I think we're back, right? Right, okay. Right now I'm really missing hard copies and flip charts and all of that fun stuff. And so, but that's okay, we, we, we uh, adapted. So um, I, I know we're really uh, running short on time. And so I, I hope you were able to discuss a, uh, a little bit of it if some of you were able to share the document. Um, and if you wanna go back to the main um, uh, summit uh, uh, website, the document should be there. I did see it there um, and Okay, so can you switch the title? Oh yes, I will. And um, let me do that if that's okay. Can I share? Can I pull it up? There it is, right? I have it back on the slides. That's the. Thank you. So I'll quickly share. Here's the oh, title okay. here. And if, yeah, if anyone wants to email me directly, I'll put my email in the chat in just a second. Oops, um, I, can, I can send you the document directly. So a big apologies for that. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's, uh, while this institution in particular was an HBCU, um, there were a lot of things that I saw that were really common to some of the things that are happening at our college and actually now, you know, especially with the collaboration, the, the issue of career and those discussions. Um, and so, uh, can we go into the to the just to the next slide? And so, if anyone wants to um, share any of your uh, discussions, uh, any maybe answers to the questions that you had, anything that stood out to you in the reading, um, you can do so in the chat. Or if you are inclined to, you can um, unmute yourself and just something that that maybe stood out to you. I'll briefly share a little bit of uh, in the, just in the breakout room I was with, with with one of my colleagues. Just you know, the one thing that stood out was that you know how did they incentivize these folks and and compensation, right, is usually the thing that that comes up quite a bit. And so our question was, how do we you know when, once you do that, how do you sustain that, right? You know, there's some things that um, you do as a pilot and you compensate folks for that, but sometimes, especially now perhaps it's not as sustainable as it used to be. And so 
how do we also incentivize our faculty and staff um, to continue this work when um, compensate, you know, money in a sense is not involved? What are other things, you know, how can we be creative about what will incentivize um, our colleagues? I think one of the things that I've found is that um, you do sometimes have to offer that initial incentive just to build interest. Um, but once you find yourself going through training, for instance, that provides you with more tools that you can then take into the classroom and, and you get these tangible results um, and improvements and, and the things that you aspire to change, you actually see that positive change. Uh, you begin to do it because it's a personally enriching activity for you. And it actually brings more joy to doing your job. Um, or at least that's something that, that I've sort of found in incorporating these, these modifications um, or just the willingness to stay dynamic with the audience that I'm in front of. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Jennifer. Once, uh, once something gets moving up, you've made more connections, you've made more friends, you've made, made, made more of a network, it becomes satisfying on its own, but it may need some uh, financial contribution to begin to boot it up. Mm -hmm. On our on our college, nothing moves forward without with, forward forward without an MOU. Wow! Right, Henry. And I think and I think sometimes even with that, um, Tim, since you bring up and, and, and I'm yes. in that collective as well, uh, I think it also has to do with word of mouth, right? So if you yes. can get faculty to buy in, um, and and the influential faculty, because obviously some faculty have more influence over other faculty than other faculty. Um, then if you can get those people to buy in, it's, it's almost like Starbucks. The, the advertisement, <laughs> um, it, will, it will happen for itself. And, and, I, and I almost think that hearing it out, you know, from the person's mouth is almost better than you know, a, a flashy brochure or a flashy flyer um, that goes mm -hmm. out making all these promises. You actually have testimonials um, that you can take from that and then, and then sort of create your own experiences where it, it fits and works for you. Very true. I think we have time for one more. It's never enough time. Uh, Tahira, do you want to ask your hand? Yes. How are you? I'm from San Bernardino Valley College. And Ooh. one of the things that I've learned about taking this work forward was knowing your constituent groups on your campus, um, utilizing the power that the Academic Senate has, because I've been um, faculty lead on my campus for three years. I've worked with ASCCC as well. But I noticed that I did not completely understand how it worked. So it was really difficult to get things done. And you know, you, you're doing all this work, but you can't figure out how to move forward. Once I figured out that having academic support, the decisions and how to get stuff done, it's been a lot easier to get things done. But having that management buy-in is crucial. I mean, yes, I understand that Pathways is faculty-led, but how, you got to have somebody there that can write the checks. You got to have somebody there that can make the final decision. So having uh, working very tightly with our VPI, VPS, it has been, uh, you know, a lot easier to get things done. Um, which they were there in the beginning, but we've had like some changes in administration and stuff. But I just know, have you know, have going back to the the Senate and actually having those action items has really moved everything tremendously for us. Thank you. We are we are really running up on time, and so we wanted to get to the <laughs> questions. And so I know it's always such a challenge, um, but uh, we'll try to uh, get through these questions as quickly as possible. And Megan, please jump in uh, wherever you think. And so um, we, right now, I would say I'm not sure how you know how much it's changed the student experience. We're still in process in terms of really deploying uh, our guided pathways framework, and so. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're in the right direction, you know, and as we build more collaboration between our counseling and instructional faculty, we know, we expect that the student experience is hopefully going to be better. Um, uh, in terms of data, data was really the thing I think that got us started on this. You know, it was some of the obvious things, right? Too many units, too many degrees, you know, that some of our students were, were, were leaving with. And that was really kind of our, our starting point. And it was really about thinking about how do we change that and um, hearing from students. And so I'm getting to that uh, question for, you know, those focus groups um, were really valuable in getting that authentic, you know, voice from students about what it was really like to from beginning to end for them. 
and it really it really kind of um, showed us that we had to move as quickly as we can with this new framework. Um, I'm sorry, Megan. Anything else? I'm I'm sure I'm leaving things out. No, I think that's that's. I think that's great. No, I think, and we're, and we're 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 a work in progress. <laughs> we're far <laughs> from perfect. We're still trying to work. Um, but I, but the big thing is what we're trying to say today is that it really, we've, in order to be a community for our students, we have to be a community on the campus as well. Someone asked where did this begin? We did a lot of this work within counseling. Counseling kind of started leading it, yeah. which worked out really well because at our campus, counseling had really felt left out of the entire process and not really recognized as faculty. So being able to take that, that theoretical background, and background with career and then have everybody start working on that together just made everybody kind of start on the same kind of common ground and really collaborate together. So that's where it really, it really helped us to to dispel myths about career and we're still working on that and then but also then have some fun and play and realize that we have we can bring a lot of creativity and get to know people in the process and we are at time sure. we want to honor your your time yes. get you One your honor. breaks uh, thank you so much we appreciate your patience with the technology and with us as we go through this just some really good feedback and discussion and so i, I really enjoyed um, doing this and thank you megan and thank you everyone thank you, thank you enjoy your days thank you